Hello and welcome to the Stash Down Diaries. In this video I'm going to do a little something different. Um, I, mean, I am going to do a yarn stash tour and the reason why I want to do it is because, well number one I like watching these videos so I'm thinking other people are like minded like me and enjoy watching these videos. The other reason is that I want something for posterity for my stash so I can see how well I'm doing and I haven't really set my goals for what I want my stash to look like in the end and at what point I can stop doing the stash in and stash out. So here I am in my little yarn room. There's probably going to be interruptions. You're, you can probably hear background noise right now. I do have two four month old kittens and one of them just ran down the hall <laughs> and uh, a very playful dog although the dog is just right here chilling out on the futon. So, so I'm just going to start from the door and work my way in. There's there's a lot going on in here in some places. I do have to reorganize a bit. I wish I did this earlier in the year before I actually reorganized because I did reorganize, but some other stuff needs a little work. So if this interests you, don't forget to hit the like button and let's get to it. So the first thing you're gonna see when you start to walk into my yarn room is this Christmas stocking that I have. I love this thing so I don't put it away. It's one of my favorite things that I've knit. So down, it goes downstairs at Christmas time, but then for the rest of the year, it lives here. Um, I kind of don't want to put it in the dark in case, you know, with the rest of the decorations in case of moths or anything like that. So it's out here in the light where moths aren't that interested in it. I should do a moth tip video because there are, like there have been moths in my house. It is an old house. Um, it's from the 40s. They were here when I moved in. Uh, maybe I'll talk about that in another video of my moth. I can't, cats are going nuts. My whole experience with moths and what tips I have to uh, deal with them. So if that's one, something you want to see, let me know in the comments below. Here we go, getting into the stash. Uh, this is the first basket. Uh, this is what I call my elder stash. I went through my stash and take a drink every time I say stash. So I went through it and I pulled out everything that was from 2012, which is the year I started knitting, and some stuff from 2013. I can't remember if I took out everything from 2013 or uh, just enough to fill the basket. I don't recall. So there's that, and then there's some of my Barocco in the bag there uh, that I also want to use up. So that is the first basket, and I would like to get to the point where this one is empty. So here we are getting into my closet in the yarn room. Uh, there's a lot going on in here and it really needs to be reorganized there. It has some good points, you know, all the shawls are hung up, but then there's stuff that's like kind of balled in, in these hangers. I don't know what you call these hanging boxes things that you get from, um, Ikea. There's like a blanket case thing here that has a bunch of knit knitwear that I've knitted. Um, there's a pile of things to donate. Like it just needs um, a little, it needs a little zhuzh. So um, I don't know when I'm gonna, how I'm gonna do it or what I'm gonna do, but yeah, something needs to happen here, but let's get into uh, some of the things. So one of the things you might've just seen is, this is a, a basket of things that I am gifting or selling. So as I finish things, they need a specific spot to go. Um, I'm gonna need something bigger for the summer months because I kind of stockpile things. But these are from uh, my saltwater stash down. These are also from my saltwater stash down. And by saltwater stash down, I mean where I am knitting through the saltwater knitting books um, by uh, Shirley Legro. No, Christine Legro and Shirley. Cheryl the Pearl. I always forget her last name. I wish I had the book handy by, but they're all downstairs because I've been using them so much. So the first bin I have is, I have it labeled as commercial sock, but if you're anything like me, things get tossed in differently. So at some point, regular, not well, non-commercial sock here might get tossed in here. 
So I have everything in the bin and then most of it is in plastic bags. Here's some Estelle Evolution sock. That's not in a bag, but these are nitpick stroll and I use these for heel cups and toes. Here's some more nitpicks. Um, there is a couple of balls of opal and then some uh, sock and wool. I love this one. This is the Starry Starry Night Van Gogh one. I think that's going to be socks for me. And then some more, a couple more skeins of opal and then some Patton's Croy. So this container is pretty much well organized. And you'll notice that, um, yeah, I keep things in plastic bags because moths. And it's very important to toss your stash and check it out every once in a while too. So that's the commercial sock yarn bin. And then this one I just have labeled sock. So it's just all fingering weight yarns and there could be still some commercial in here um, that I intend to knit into socks. And so there is flock fiber. I think there's, these are both flock fiber, yeah. Um, absolutely love flock fiber. This one is uh, Wild Ponies, and this one is Tina, and they're really pretty, pretty speckle yarns, and then we're getting into more, there's some more Knit Picks Felici, I think this one is actually on my list of um, older sock stash that I'm knitting, like, next, I have it prioritized, and then the Sandus Garn Sisu that I'm going to use for heels, cuffs, and toes. There's uh, more opal. This one too is on the list of older sock yarns that I am going to knit with. More knit pick stroll for heels, cuffs, and toes. And more comfort sock and wool. Um, I think this might be for heels, cuffs, and toes, but I might actually knit a pair with it. Although it would be nice heels, cuffs, and toes for this one. I think. Probably, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, more sock and wool. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And then Drops Delight. I don't actually know for sure if this is going to be used for socks because it's a single ply. And a lot of the time I don't use single ply for socks. So this might get bumped to the general fingering section. I think this might actually be in here because I didn't have enough room in the general fingering section for this yarn. And then I have, this is Nipix Hawthorne, and this is Lorna's Laces. Yeah, both of these are Lorna, Lorna's Laces, and I think they're Soulmate. That is a really nice sock yarn. Really tough. So that is that container. Okay. I think my kittens are fighting and Piper is getting upset about it, aren't you Piper? Oh, I might have to go and check and see what they're doing. Okay. Yeah, I just knocked over the pile of <laughs> donations. Yeah, I'm going to see what they're doing. Okay, next bin is just general fingering. And I cannot remember the name of this yarn. It's from New Brunswick and it's really lovely. I'm really sorry that I can't think of the name right now. I will put it in the uh, description box. I really need to put my labels inside my yarn cakes. I think Piper's trying to get past me. Don't get past me. Piper, you okay? There you go. All right. So then I have some um, Miss Fats and some Lichen and Lace. Lichen and Lace is another great Atlantic Canadian yarn. And there's Madeline Tosh. This has been in my stash for a while. I really should knit with it. This is, um, when I wound it, there was like, I don't know whether there was a knot or what, but that's supposed to go with that. Actually, let me just stick that in the bag. And 
And this is polka dot yarns. I have a shawl in mind for this. Uh, I think it's a Hobie Locatelli shawl. Uh oh, kitten is kitten is in the room. We'll see if the other one follows. She probably will. They do really like to follow me around the house. So this yarn is like one of those special skeins. It is um, fleece artist and fleece art fleece artist. Uh, would dye special skeins for Bedeck yarns when um, it was open and uh, this was her birthday colorway. I think it was like 25 years she was celebrating with the shop. And then Rose Hill yarns. I love Rose Hill yarns. And some Cyborg's Craft Room. Uh, that's my last skein of Cyborg's Craft Room that I have. The dyer um, pa unfortunately passed away a number of years ago. Which is a shame because she was super talented, super talented dyer. And then I have some Legacy Fiber Arts. Uh, what's this one? I think it's Zen Yarn Garden. Yeah, it's Zen Yarn Garden. And then some Arucania. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but these two are that. Okay, so I just like recorded the lace section and well I recorded it and then when I was looking back it turns out that I hadn't hit record and then I ended up when I hit to turn it, the video off I ended up recording myself tidying everything back up so I got everything tidied back up and then realized that I didn't even record the lace section so here we go again <laughs> my little overstuffed lace container. This is all mohair. This is all Malabrigo, so the silk paca and the lace. These ones right here, they were a color affection that I knit some time ago and it came out a little small. Um, I am gonna knit it again I should make that my next lace weight project actually. I like to have lace weight projects on the needles. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I'm trying to get my lace weight stash down. Um, this is one area of my stash where I, I've, I've really neglected it and I have some great yarns in here. So, and some really old <laughs> yarns in here. Some of it's from like 2012, 2013. No, not 2012. Cause if it was in 2012, it'd be in that basket over there. So let's say 2013, 2014. So, um, yeah, this will be the next one, I think. And then these ones are all Estelle Super Alpaca Lace. And I think to get these knit down, I'm going to hold them double. This is another mohair. This is Sweet Skein of Mine out of New Brunswick. And this is the brand that I couldn't think of when I was doing the fingering white, that nice minty one, because this is going to go together. And I think I'm going to do a birds of a feather like this one in the nice minty color. This is Noro. I can't remember which base, but I cast it on and it's something and then it wasn't working out. Oop. So um, I frogged it and now it lives here. These are Shibui. I got those on sale when Bedeck Yarns was closing. So I have a shawl in mind for those in my queue. And this is, I can't remember the name of that one. I've had it in my stash for a while and there's some blue here. Um, I'll think of it later, but this is Turtle Pearl Tickety Boo. I have a project in mind for that one in my queue. This one is the Fiberco Meadow. I got this one, but yarns was closing. I should gather up all those yarns and start knitting them. Actually, what I should do too is gather up. There's, I used to do, actually, I still do it. Let's face it. Um, birthday yarn purchases. And some years they were like smaller than others. This year it was a fairly sizable one. If you watch that video, uh, it was, if you look for it in my videos, it is yarn haul, my 40th birthday yarn crawl labeled something like that if that interests you but there's some from birthday hauls that I have not knit with yet I'm pretty sure so I need to go through my stash and find like the oldest birthday haul maybe target that 
So I'm targeting a lot of things here. I'm targeting the lace. I'm targeting the sock scraps. I'm targeting old hauls. So <laughs> there's a lot going on. I really have to get myself together and streamline like what I'm doing here. So uh, here's, I'm not done with the lace weight yet. A lot fits in this little bin. This is more Malabrigo lace and I'm thinking maybe it should be in the sweater quantity bin, but because I was going to knit a cardigan with it, like a feather light or something. But maybe I, I might not. It might be a shawl. So we'll see. This stuff, this is more Arucania. That's the one I couldn't remember. That's green as well. This one here is a cashmere lace weight. And Bedeck Yarns used to have like their own yarns. I don't know the whole story behind it, but they had um, some yarns that were just, I don't know if she was dying. I should ask her. But um, this is a Bedeck Yarns yarn and it is a cashmere lace. I know I started knitting something with it and it just like the project didn't do it justice or something. So I think what I might do is hold it double and knit something that I really like. And then finally, another purchase when Bedeck Yarns was closing. This is Trailhead Yarns in the Cabot Trail base. And the colorway is It's a Party. This is a really fun one. I do have a project. It's 100% Tencel. I've never knit with Tencel before, but I like the feel of it. It feels like summer. <laughs> so anyway... Looks like I successfully recorded this time, so I'm going to clean up again and then we will carry on. Okay, so continuing on in the closet, and this is where I start to feel overwhelmed because when I have yarn in places that where, like in places where it's not in a bin, if it's just hanging out like randomly because it doesn't fit anywhere else, that's where I get overwhelmed. So this yarn is from my birthday haul. Except for this one, my mom gave me that one. But this is gonna be in a sweater, I believe. And I just haven't cast it on yet because it's summertime and uh, I already have to finish my humulus. Um, there's a bunch of project bags. There's my yarn winder and then some projects that I think those are donation projects, pretty sure. There's nothing in that bin. And then I got two random balls of Galway right here that are going to go with the orange Galway that's in the basket that I showed at the beginning of the video. Um, it's gonna be part of my saltwater stash down, so it's gonna go into mitts or something. And then here's the mess again, but look, this, I mentioned in one of my other videos that I salvaged the filling from my dog's toys, and <laughs> there is a pile of it. And yeah, there's some finished objects hiding in there. There's more yarn up in that bag up there that my friend's mother gave me. So I have to knit with that. And yeah, so that's the closet. And so what I would like to accomplish so far for my stash down is to have that basket right there done. These yarns, oop, focusing on my hand this right there that either done or in a place and the Galway that right there done or in a place um, yeah I'm probably gonna get questions on this this is my chalkboard knitted inside of the door um, I'm not the greatest painter so I made a little bit of a mess but this is last year's gift knitting list so I kept track of my Christmas gift knitting on there and I need to erase that and put a new list up. Maybe I'll do a short when I have that done. And in here, this is uh, Briggs and Little scraps. So these are all things that will, let's see if I can get that out of there, all right, partially out. They will go into mittens and things and socks when I do accent colors. So that's where the Barocco, not Barocco, Briggs and Little scraps live. It's my Hobie and Co bag. That was a nice splurge. I think it was my Christmas gift, not last year, but maybe another year. I can't remember. That is Area 51. That is where the languishing unfinished objects go while they wait until I finish other things to knit. 
And then this is my little Ikea Alex drawers. I have a second one, but I pushed everything to uh, this one, um, kind of downsize some things so that I could use the other one to store my, um, like my genealogy stuff and my important papers. So there's my knitting needles and I'm in here because, oh look, more Briggs and Little. So this is all for um, my saltwater stash down. I, when I started getting into knitting the mittens and the socks, the socks especially, I was buying colors to experiment with combinations. And now I have some combinations that I really like and it's fun to play with them for the mittens and everything. But I have too much to the point where it is taking up a drawer that could be otherwise used. And this is my only cotton. That's my only cotton that I have right now, which is awesome. If you watched a previous video, you would see that um, I used up all my little balls of cotton and made scrappy dishcloths. So I might, I really like that colorway. So I might knit a bag, a uh, market bag out of it or something, or I might just knit a bunch of dishcloths. I don't know. We'll see um, how I'm feeling. So that is another batch of yarn that I'd like to see go in a specific bin. Piper says hi. I don't see her ear go up when I say her name. Piper. <laughs> She's a freaking good girl. She's just chill here while the cats are going crazy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, it's really warm. Well, it's not so much that it's warm, it's that it's humid, which is why I look so dewy. This is not my complexion. It's the humidity, unfortunately. Okay, so we're going to get into another area where I'm a bit overwhelmed. Um... It's the scraps. And I only recently moved these, the scraps, into this. This was in the mudroom closet and I wasn't really using it. So I thought it'd be pretty a good idea to use it for the scraps because the scraps were all in random baskets and it was not doing great for my anxiety over my yarn stash because this is the area that just causes the most overwhelm. But I have been doing really well with it lately and in like since the beginning of the year. So good things are happening there. It's getting better and it will all actually fit in here, which is a good sign. Although there is some I think that still has to go in there, um, which we'll look at in a sec. But there's this basket here and this is just finished objects. These are things that I am. Oops, it's gifty socks, things that I'm gifting, things, socks that I'm selling. Uh, yeah, so that's that one. And then um, this lone mitten, I was putting away my um, winter stuff and I can't find the other mitten. I think it's in the car. I haven't checked the car yet. Uh, pretty good bet. That's where it is. And then this basket has uh, socks I've knit for myself. And then it has some Patton's Croy. I love this hat. This is a Stephen West pattern and Piper chewed the edge right here. So I have it in this basket with the leftovers because I am going to try to repair it. Because it's at the cast on edge, I'm not gonna re-knit it, re-knit the whole thing. But this is like, this is one of my favorite hats of all time that I knit. And the little frigger chewed it. Didn't ya? Oh, she's asleep now. Her eyes are closed. Uh, this was from my yarn haul, and I think this is Creative Crazy Payette. I can't pronounce it. This is Knit and Sparkle Thread. And I think I'm going to, I haven't knit myself Anilla the Unicorn yet. I've knit three for my nieces, but I haven't knit one for me yet. And this might go in that, or it might go in a fairy. I have a fairy uh knitting book full of um cute patterns cute fairy patterns so this might go in a fairy or it might go in a unicorn we shall see okay so let's get into this whole situation so it is stuffed this yarn here this is random 
um, some scraps, some mohair and stuff. It's stuff that I stockpiled in here to make my uh, dream blue fairy that I'm going to eventually make. Or for unicorn hair or anything like that. Uh, this is like, this is Lana Grossa, I think. No, Lana Stop Fox. This is probably discontinued. Um, there's some leftover Angel by uh, Handmaiden. There's some sparkly stuff. Uh, yeah, that's all that is. So now we get into the leftover soft yarn. So this is the first bag. Um, these are all like self-striping. More self-striping. This is Christmas self-striping or self-patterning. More Christmas self-striping. I don't know what I'm doing with the uh, Christmas ones. I don't know what I'm doing with the Christmas ones. I might do gnomes and stuff. It depends. Um, they might go into my blankets. I'm not sure. I might put the Jingle Felici in there just to kind of be done with it. But I really like... Ooh, this one is Lollipop Yarns. So I might do something fun with that one. More. This is Felici that I held double to knit something and I didn't like what I was knitting. I don't even remember what it is. Um, but yeah, I don't know if I'm going to keep it held double or if I'm going to try to separate it. I'm probably going to keep it held double though, because that's a lot of work separating it. These, I took out a couple of balls that had about 40 something grams of yarn because I'm going to knit, I started knitting one pair of yoga socks and I'm going to knit two more pairs. So that's what these are going to be for. And then this is my bag of self-patterning yarn. Um, and then the self-patterning -pattern yarn goes into my jelly roll blanket. The self-striping goes into the northeasterly. The self-patterning, patterning, can't talk again. That goes in the jelly roll. And sometimes before they go into those blankets, they go into the barn raising. So that is that drawer. It is a lot better than it was. I've knocked down quite a few little scrappy balls um, and got to go into Ravelry and remove them from the stash. It's going to be a trick getting all this stuff back in here. I think that's okay. Look at that. Oh, there we go. Okay. So more fingering scraps. And I have this little unicorn tail from Madeline Toshchu. That's going to go in a cup cozy. I thought I used this in my first cup cozy but it wasn't this it was something else uh, I can't I might have been a diff I think it was a different Madeline Tosh because I have a, a shawl in there that's three colors of Madeline Tosh and I grabbed because the Edison bulb one was caked up so I th assumed that this was caked up too because I bought them together and uh yeah I made a mistake and so this is gonna have to be balled up and I'm going to knit a can cozy with that. More Christmas yarn, except, oh yeah, some of this is self-striping. Some of it is variegated or speckled, and some of it is self-striping. This one here, that's flock fiber. I love that one. I think I made the picnic blanket socks out of that one by um, Curious Handmade. This is more either speckled or solid. And I haven't really come up with a plan for the speckles or solids. I think they're going to be in a different blanket. Or I was also looking at cushions. So we shall see. And here's more. And then, I don't know if there's anything interesting here. This is the Nova Scotia colorway from Fleece Artist. And there's some Cascade Heritage. This is a fun Richard DeVries colorway. I see, I think this is the color at Kay Breton Highlands colorway from the Fleece Artist. There's more. I do know that these are going to be 
that's enough there to make a pair of shorties. So that's probably going to be shorties. And, uh, yeah, so I'll figure something out. These could be in the heels, cuffs, and toes are used in multicolors for socks. So that's that drawer. I could start planning out what I'm going to do with the variegated and stuff, but I'm doing so well with the self-patterning and self-striping that I don't really need to think about that right now. And I think I should finish some other blankets before I get into that. So now I'm getting into worsted. Uh, some of this is random too. Worsted DK, sport weight. There's this. <laughs> Oh boy, make another little, I saved some of this to make gnomes, which by the way, I think I should make that a goal for this month to finish the gnome that I already have on the needles. Some of these, okay, so this is worsted or Aran weight, and some of these are full balls, but were leftovers from uh, other projects. There's a sugar bush in here that I could use together to do a hat. I think there's enough. That's beautiful Manos del Araguay. I used that for hats for, I think my sister-in-law and maybe one of my nieces. I can't remember if I had enough. That's um, Estelle Colorflow. That was from a hat that I knit for my aunt before she passed. And then the Louisa Harding that was left over from one of my favorite shawls of all time. Uh, the Four Seasons Shawl by Alana Dacos. So, that this is some cascade 220 superwash this is cascade wave that was left over from a sweater i made for my niece i think this was too from that sweater Ginny is here checking things out um here's some more and some of these are like almost full skeins i have them earmarked for like headbands and stuff watch out Ginny girl She's like knocking the stand here's more sugar bush I could like put this together to do hats. I should, after summer sock camp is over, I think I'm going to go on like a hat marathon. Um, I've had one request for hats for Christmas. So I will start with that. These are DK and sport weight scraps. I can't remember the name, the base, but this is Cascade. This is, it's either the Fiber Co or I think it's a fiber crow. It's from a cowl that I knit for my mom. These are from, these are our sock yarn and they're self patterning and they would be cute in a gnome, I think. So yeah, that's, that's a lot of scraps, but I'm really happy at this point that they mostly fit in here other than my Briggs and Little scraps that have their own home because they're all kind of like going to be used together for different things but this this here is a little ridiculous this little wait this that's ridiculous so ideally I think this is always going to be the scrap spot it's this is not going to be something that I am going to like make a goal to be completely used up because I'm always going to have scraps. It's just the way it is with uh, knitting. Okay. So since I'm right here, this is one of the baskets that my aunt gave me. Uh, she used to live in Africa, so she had a lot of baskets. Um, so this is Overflow, Briggs and Little, and McAuslin's that does not have a place. So there's granite, there's khaki. Khaki is one of the main colors I'm gonna be knitting with because my search and rescue team really like the socks, seem to really like the socks um, that look like kind of camel. Here's a sample. These ones were knit with rag, but I can't find uh, rag anywhere local lately. So I'll just switch to like light brown or oatmeal or something and they'll still be They'll still be great. It's this whole section here that I think people like. And then the brown heels and toes in the toughy cocoa. So khaki is one that I'm probably always going to have on hand. Khaki and cocoa and then whatever I can find for the main color. And granite is like used. In a few, I think I have. Yeah. 
these ones. These are a common com color combination that I'm going to be doing because my search and rescue people like orange. It's kind of our our color, even though I'm more of a summer and I don't look good in orange. I still make the exception for search and rescue attire. This is Liz Moore's Sheep Farm. I use this in these socks for me and I have all this left over. So this might go into um, saltwater knitting hat or something. This is a leftover ball of McCoslin's. This is McCoslin's. McCoslin's woolen mill. McCoslin's woolen mill. So that's all those. And then I have two country roving for doing thrums. So that is those. And I would absolutely like for these to um, be knit up or um, just at some point have their own spot somewhere in a bin properly and then so this is something that I got at winners one time it's supposed to be for gardening but I thought it'd make a really great little knitting caddy and this is a hot mess in here so Piper it's right there that 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 little troublemaker right there who's actually being quiet right now she likes to pull like the center of cakes out when she gets a hold of yarn. She hasn't gotten a hold of yarn in a while. Um, if it's not in a cake, if it's still in the, in the hank and wound up, I don't know what you call that, like braided up, like when you just buy it, she pulls the uh, label off, which is fine. She can pull the la label off if she wants. Maisie just ran in here. So this, I have yarn that she pulled apart and I started putting some of it together. Um, so here's a mess. So, and then I tossed some of my Briggs and Little in here. These were from the mitts that I knit in salt water stash down. These are, this is toughy. This actually should be in the toughy spot. I do actually have a toughy spot for the toughy yarn to keep it away from the heritage so I know that it's toughy. This was in those socks for the heels um, so that there was some nylon in it. And this more brings in a little, but then there's some that I rolled back up. Like she had gotten a hold of this yarn and uh, made a mess with it so um i started rolling some up so i did this one and i did this one um here's the edison bulb and i put it with this one which was a mistake it was supposed to go with the other unicorn tail so i am going to revisit that and this should now go in this bin i think that's malintosh so yeah this is a mess this is something i need to deal with I'm going to put that in the toughy bin when I get to it. Okay, so what do I want to accomplish here? I want this emptied, this, and this emptied. So, stray yarns in the closet, that basket by the door, this and this, and this drawer in here with the heritage. I want that all used up. Lofty goals, I know. Okay, so we have another random basket right here. This yarn is that is yarn that I'm planning to cast on. So this one, I'm planning on making it a Musselboro hat for myself. This is my next saltwater knits cast on. It's gonna be mug up mitts and it's partner yarn is in the bottom of the basket. This is yarn that I'm casting on for socks. This is, um, this right here is Natural You. It's really lovely yarn. Um, yeah, so this is the buddy yarn for the mug up mittens that I'm going to knit with this one. So enjoy those. This is Lichen and Lace. This is, uh, this is going to be a muscle bro hat. This is Richard DeVries Pepino. And then I got some cocoa that should be in the toughy box. 
And this was a little, this is called the Rasta bucket or something like that. This is something that I knit before. I don't use it, so I think I'm going to frog it. And there's what's left of my um, Briggs and Little rag. So that's all I have left. So I can't get another pair of socks out of that, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Okay, so another bin. This is the Malabrigo, and then I have this. There's scraps. I think this is all scraps. Yeah, this is a Malabrigo scrap. And it's supposed to be inside here. I can't remember why it's out. Maybe because it doesn't fit. I might be able to make it fit. So this is like Misha. This is Restita. These are more scraps of various types. This is um, Silk Packa, and it's not in with the other lace because it's in a project right now. So it really should go in that other basket. There we go. Okay. This is a sweater quantity that I got um, when Bedeck Yarns closed, and I think I was going to get a sweater that had a different color with it. Um, that's going to happen <laughs> eventually. To do my humulus, I have to do a love note and then a radari, and then I can pick a different one after that. First step is getting my humulus done, though. Um, here's some fingering weight Malabrigo, some sock, some uh, I can't remember the name of this single ply base, it's not right there. No, it's a tag still on. It should be this one. What's this one? Mishita? Yeah, Mishita. <clears throat> and here's some more scraps. And here's some more, well, full skeins, which is nice. I think this is going to be a hat for me. And that'll be a hat for somebody else. More than likely. So, yeah, I keep my Malabrigo in its own bin because Malabrigo is bay has always been like probably my favorite sock not my favorite sock or my favorite yarn I don't know if I'm gonna get this closed am I okay success so with these I don't know if there's anything I really want to accomplish here like as far as downsizing, and getting rid of these baskets maybe I'd like to get to the point where there's a drawer in the plastic thing that holds my scraps that has um, stuff that's queued up in it, maybe. Maybe downsize one of those drawers. Be nice to get all the fingering weight to one drawer and then have all the worsted in another drawer and then have one drawer for things that are about to be cast on. Maybe I'll lock that in as a goal. Okay, so now we're in the far corner of the yarn room, and this is where most of the stash is kept in the bins. I don't have, I think, like, I'd like to get my stash down, I think, to just these bins, plus the scrap bin, and the toughy basket, I think. And maybe the bins, the plastic bins that are in the closet. But ideally, it'd be nice to get them uh, down to a lower quantity. So that's where I keep that basket that I showed you and the Malabrigos behind it. That's my muscle bro hat that has to be frogged and re-knit. So that's ready to go there. That's my general notions pouch. Um, that is an old skein of fish knits that I am going to knit something for my niece with. I can't decide between a muscle bro hat or a hitchhiker, but I'm leaning towards hitchhiker. And there's Jinx. This is, uh, needs to be straightened out a bit. And that is the Tuffy basket that I talked about before. And my knitting books. And I got this cute little spinning wheel at the antique shop one time, the antique shop in Medec. And she's just snoozing away. 
So, um, next I will get into these bins. We'll have a look, little closer look at them. Okay, so the first bin that I'm pulling out is the Briggs and Little Overflow bin. Yes, I have more Briggs and, Briggs and Little Overflow. And it's a little bit ridiculous. A few different colors here. But they'll all be worked on during my salt water stash down. So we'll see how I do with that. By the end of the year, it'd be interesting to watch this back and see where my Briggs and Little stash is at. So the next bin I have is labeled rustic yarns so in here there is you guessed it more Briggs and little and i can't remember i don't think there's any mcawson's or windmills in here but like what else so this is the usual Briggs and little heritage most of this and then i have there's the heritage, and then this is the, um, oh, what's it called? Painted or something? Soft spun. Painted soft spun. So I want it, this has been in the stash for a while. I really want to knit with that. Um, I'm thinking like those like waffly mitts. And then this is from um, somebody local who used to dye yarn. I'd like to knit this up. I can't even remember what the yarn con the con fiber content is of this. It is really pretty though. And from the same person, there is this one. It's like a twisted or marled um, blue and green, but it's not like tightly twisted. I think it's like a worsted weight or DK. Um, something with that. So this bin definitely needs work. So much Briggs and Little in here. Like, if I went through every colorway with you guys, it would be like, this would be a really long video. But there's more orange that I would, uh, or this is Hunter Orange, that I would make socks with, like the little um, accent color on the top. I have to show you guys Maisie. I think she's going to chill out for a little bit, maybe. Oh my goodness. So that is this bin. This is the, I would say, call this the main Briggs and Little Heritage section with a couple other rustic yarns in it. I'd like this to end up being maybe the only Briggs and Little Heritage section. So everything in that drawer that I showed earlier and anything in that other, oh, the one that Maisie is laying on, that other bin, I'd like for that to be downsized, so. I have, the other thing too is that with this yarn comes a lot of projects in my brain, which can also be overwhelming, but it's nice to have plans, I guess. So this one, this is mostly, I think this is all worsted actually. Worsted, I have listed uh, Cascade, Knit Picks, Tradition, Estelle, and Madeline Tosh. And there's some Sugarbush, a bunch of other things. Oh, there's some, this is Richard DeVries and Fleece Artist. Drops Big Fable. I think this one's discontinued, which is unfortunate because it's hard to find a good worsted weight sock yarn that has nylon in it. So there's the Sugarbush, and then there's... Um, Cascade Superwash, more Cascade Superwash. This is Sugarbush Rapture that I won in a contest at Bedeck Yarns, and I think I have a project queue for that. I'm pretty sure. I know I was looking. This is Cascade 220. Um, this is a mix of Diamond Tradition and Estelle Worsted. Those are both really great yarns for knitting uh, for kids, because they are they have their um, uh, wool acrylic blend and they're uh, machine washable. Here's some knit picks, wool of the Andes, and this is going to be my uh, Star Wars scarf, double knitting Star, Star, Star Wars scarf. Here's the Mad Tosh, 
and then some Nipix Chroma. I think I was going to knit um, Fiddlehead Mittens out of this. There's Cascade and more Cascade 220 in the Hunter Orange. So yeah, that bin is like kind of a real hodgepodge of things. I'm not too concerned about downsizing this. There's really, it's in a proper, what I would call a proper bin. It is in proper storage. So I think I already have some lofty goals when it comes to downsizing things. Like <laughs> one thing though, I would like to be able to close this easily. Okay. And here we have more fingering. This is the fingering that is not going to be for socks. Here is some leftover Jameson from my hat that I knit. I'm pretty sure I might be able to get one of those sheepy hats knit out of this. I might have enough left here to do that. This is Lizzie Ann yarn. I love Lizzie Ann yarn. I looked at their Instagram and it hasn't been active, so I don't know if they're still dying, but it was like one of my favorites. This is Miss Babs and this has been in my stash for a while and needs to be something. I think these are both heritage, uh, Cascade heritage. They look like it. This one I use, um, held double on, um, a blanket that I knit, the Bits and Bobs blanket. Here's some mini mochi that has been in my stash for a while and needs to be something. Here it is from, uh, Nerds with Needles Unicorn Hair. Love that one. Here is some, what is this one? Oh, Smash Knits. These are both Smash Knits. And this is Lichen and Lace. I know I got this one when I, uh, the deck yarns was closing. I thought that would make a great pair of um, their fingerless mitts or something for the fall. It's very pumpkin spicy looking. This, um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, it's a little more rustic than some of the others. It's... Yeah, I can't remember. Um, and then there's some more Lizanne's. This is Hedgehog, Hedgehog, and Hedgehog. And they are all beautiful and all need to be knit and things. I am doing an Across the Pond shawl. I'm pairing this with one of the Malibu Ghost Games, the finger and white ones. And knitting an Across the Pond shawl um, by the Knitting Expat. That's I can't remember if she goes by her real name when she has her patterns published or if she still goes by the name expat but she has a youtube channel i want to check her out but yeah across the pond is what i'm gonna make so there's some stuff in here i'd like to dance with i really like to use up that jameson on something do something nice and color worky might possibly be a uh so what is it called? Is it called Bobble Hat? I think it is. Bobble. Oh my god. Whoops. Sorry if you're getting motion sickness, but that is just and she's purring. Me baby. I really lucked out with my kittens. They are so sweet. Okay. Sorry, paper. Next, to crawl in here. Ooh. This is the DK and Sport Weight bin. Um, there are scraps in here from Patton's Croy. They have it listed as a fingering. I think a lot of people have dealt with I know this but they have it listed as a figuring and uh, it's more of a sport weight so I keep it with the sport weight but here's the scraps from that 
Um, I can't remember what this is. I will figure it out at some point. Hmm, I think this is a worsted though and doesn't belong in here. This is Barocco Ultra Pack of Light. Cascade Spore. Um, this is the Fiber Co. I can't remember the name of the base, but this I have a hat pattern picked out for that. Um, opal leftovers. This is some DK that I used for a cowl for my brother. It is, I think it's a Knit Picks one. I think. But, uh, I can't remember exactly. And then there's just, this Drops Alpaca has been in my stash for a long time and I have started using it up by holding it double with things to knit mittens. This is gonna be a hat. I'm pretty sure as a Christmas gift. And then this, and what this is Mineville Wool Project in a DK weight. And this is Fleece Artist Kid, Kid Dazzle, this one in the middle. I still haven't figured out something for that one. And then this is Lichen and Lace, their sport weight. That's going to be Colorwork Mitts. And this is, ah, uh, man, Arbor. That's the Brooklyn Tweed. Yeah. So um, at one point, I decided that I wanted to try Brooklyn Tweed and Quince and Go. So I made an order and, uh, got the Arbor and then I got Quince & Co. Oh, we'll come across it. Um, I, I did knit with the Quince & Co. so far. This is going to be a hat. Uh, Tincture, I think, by Andrea Mallory. I have queued up for that one. But yeah, everything else in here is like scraps. Would like to get them out of there too. Like it'd be nice if one of the drawers in this thing here just fit the um, worsted and DK and sport scraps. It would be really nice to get the end of that. I actually don't have as many worsted scraps as I used to. I knitted a garland of little hats from uh, Jody Brown's hat vent patterns, which was super fun. I'm running out of places to put these bins, but they can go back in soon. The last bin is sweater quantities. So here we go. There is, yeah, so this is going to be for my love note. This is tin or tine or something. Silk mohair. So that's going to be with the love note. This is going to be a weekender. That is a just Cascade 220. Again, the denim colorway. This is going to be the love note. This is Lizzie Ann Yarns. I can't remember the name of the colorway, but yeah, this is going to be the love note. So that's the next sweater that is on my, uh, that's on my agenda. This one, I have no idea. This is BC Garn Lock Lomond. I got this when the deck Yarns was closing. And I, I took that as an opportunity to purchase some yarns that I hadn't purchased before because they were a little pricey, but they were on sale uh, because of the closing sale. So I got this one to make a sweater. And then that's why I bought the Shibui and the Fiberco Meadow. So I stocked up on some yarns that um, I wouldn't uh, otherwise be able to afford. This is going to be a sweater together. I can't remember the name of it, but it is in my queue. It's there, it exists. And then the rest of this is Let Lopi. So right there, these are the three colors. I have a sweater queue for it. I just can't remember which one it was. I was thinking of doing a Radari, but I picked the Radari instead for the Briggs and Little one. So I think that is that for this section, other than, oh, I forgot this. I think these are mostly the yarns that I set aside for the gnomes because they're all like colors that I would new, need for like his beard. If I want to do a gray beard, a white beard, a brown beard. Um, yeah, so these are all my little gnomey scraps. And then there's random like Nilesa mohair on the top. 
I would like for this to be gone. So there's another goal. Get that gone. And um, yeah, so I think that is the corner. This cute crocheted jellyfish is by the well-made wal walrus. She is a local crafter. She makes some really cute, uh, are they called silkies? They're like mermaids that can go ashore. No, seals. They're like seal humans that can go ashore in, it's, it's in folklore. They're not real, in case you were wondering. But they can get rid of their seal skin and go ashore. So she makes those and they're super cute. Like they're so cute. You should check her out on Instagram, the well-made walrus. Okay. This cat, honestly. I don't know if you can hear her purring, but she is. Okay, I am going to move on and we might end up getting in Poor little Ginny's, not Ginny, that's Maisie, in Maisie's way. I don't know where Ginny is. I've got two out of three in here. That's not bad. Almost done. There is yarn under the futon. So I thought I'd keep Piper in the shot for your enjoyment. And Maisie is now attacking my tripod. So there's that. If you get bumped around, that is what is happening. You might hear her purring in the background too. She likes to purr a lot. Okay, so this is where the bulky lives and I don't have very much of it. So it's a smaller bin and it's bulky scraps other than the Malabrigo that lives in here. Some Estelle Chunky. And this is the Quince and Co. Um, it is the, I can't remember the base, Puffin. And I knitted a pretty awesome hat out of it. It was Elk by Tiny Owl Knits. I might do a video of my favorite things that I've knit because there's like this whole back history of things that I've knit for the past like 10 years that wouldn't be in my videos otherwise. So I might do that. But some of the things that are my favorite that I've knit have gone to other people. So this is what's left of the Quince and Co. And I can't do a whole nother hat with it. So that's probably going to happen. And then Cascade. Oh, there is a stray ball of Misha or Mecca. Or what? <laughs> Maisie just went after it in here. That should be in the, all the scraps, Malabrigo scraps are in the Malabrigo bin. So there's some Cascade Equal Plus. And then more Cascade Equal Plus. And then this is a little ball of um, Fleece Artist. One of the colorways from their uh, National Park series. I think it's one of the parks in BC or the Yukon. But I knit a hat with it, just a fairly basic hat, just some texture, and it's one of my favorite hats that I've ever knit. So, great yarn. I did knit, start knitting something out of, out of this, but I can't remember what it was. And then I stopped knitting it or I frogged the whole thing. I think I frogged the whole thing. Was it Buckley? It might have been the Buckley, which is a sweater. It didn't fit. My memory serves. So that's all the bulky or super bulky that I have. Other than the, the Malabrigo stuff. Should knit with it, but get me some quick grams out. So, anyway, and last bin. This one is like yarn that I've earmarked for baby hats. So, this is the Crofter DK that has been in my stash forever. I knit a sweater for my niece with it, and I still have quite a few balls left because I can't remember what I bought it for, and then I didn't want to knit the thing that I bought it for. So. I'm going to use this up for something like baby hats work like or like just baby donations because it's um, easy care. It is 60% acrylic, 25% cotton and 15% wool. So 
and it's not like typical baby colors like some people might not want typical baby colors like these are all king cole i can't remember the name but they're all baby hats those ends i have to weave in and then they have this one in here this is going to be something else um i can't maybe shorties worsted weight shorties or something might combine them with oh they could be contrasting heels cuffs and toes with some briggs and little there's an idea same with this just to make them fun so yeah i have this box labeled baby yarn but it's not necessarily i'm pretty sure this is some diamond tradition or something that's a great knit for babies i should throw take these out and some of these out because there's one two three four and a bit and use them for something else because that would free up an entire bin if i got through this and then i could use it for storage somewhere else in my house or something same with the bulky like do i really need to hang on to that bulky or should i knit with it I should probably knit with it it would probably go pretty fast so this is not stash that i'm gonna bring out but it is fun and this also lives underneath the futon so these are the blanket squares for my barn raising quilt and i think i'm gonna start it's about time i started sewing them together because there's a lot and i might do a short where i lay these out stacks upon stacks so generally what i do with the self-striping yarn is i knit one of these and i might do it with a couple more of the um of the variegated or speckly the tonals um and they're a great memory of like different things different socks mostly that i've knit for myself and other people and um like these were socks for my mom um what else this one was a fun one the watermelon watermelon socks i made for myself oops you can't see that at all there we go anyway that is probably going to be a little short where i lay out video oh this is timber yarns i love this one it's one of my favorites yeah halloween these this was um socks for my sister-in-law and opal that was a fun one what you doing Maisie I did say there would be disruption didn't I so that's all the bins I have around are we going to summarize maybe we should summarize or did I talk about it enough through <laughs> so that basket at the door the stray yarns in the closet one drawer in the scrap things the drawer of heritage and the overflow heritage um and then moving the in the q yarn to the newly empty drawer in the um scrap yarn three drawer bin thing this is the garland that i mentioned uh that i knit out of worsted weight scraps with uh jody B brown's knit vent patterns and that is a clock from Bedeck Cairns from after when they closed. And that's Piper still snoozing away. And that's Maisie attacking the cord on my tripod. Well, that was fun and it took longer than I thought, but that's a great way to procrastinate away from doing yard work, which I have to start getting to in a bit. But I really hope you enjoyed that. I did. If you want to see some of the videos that I mentioned while I was doing this, like uh, tips and tricks to deal with moths or my past shawl knitting, comment down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe. 
Thank you for sticking in with this long video if you watched it all the way through. And even if you didn't, thank you for clicking on it and giving it a chance. And you got to see some kittens. Well, you got to see one of them. And you got to see my precious pup, Piper. Maisie is now passed out on the floor. And I think it's time to go get a snacky snack. Thanks so much for being here. I will see you in the next one. Take care.